Hello, good morning or good evening to everyone. Welcome to Mainframe DB Tutorials Part 9. So, in this video, I would like to share you the important concept in the DB2 called cursors. So, it is very, 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 very important when you're working with Mainframe DB2 or COBOL DB2. So, let's go ahead and start with the details. So, before I go into the cursors concept, let us see what exactly the select query does. Uh, a select query can retrieve one or many records. If the query results one record, it is good to capture the results and manipulate it. But the same select query, which is used in your same program, retrieves more than one record at a time. It's there is a chance that it abends with SQL code minus 81. So in order to handle this issue, we go for a concept called cursor. So in order to handle, or it also in order to retrieve multiple rows at a time and do processing with the retrieve records so we go for a concert so I think you can understand how important the cursors are so let's go ahead and see the look into the more details about the cursor so let us see the life cycle of a cursor it will be same like a file operations so that is the uh, declaration of a cursor open a cursor fetch a cursor and close a cursor let us look into the details of each step step one declaration of a cursor this statement needs to be coded either in data division or in a procedure division for better programming and understanding it is always good to code in data division so it is ju it just create the cursor position for the below query so so let us look into the syntax so uh, it's the syntax is exec sql declare cursor uh, cursor name and the cursor keyword for select uh, ta a field field one from your table name with and the conditions which you are going to use so let us let us see an example so here I have a department table for that particular department table I'm creating a cursor name called department cursor for uh, different fields select department ID department name from the department table where department ID is equals to department ID so so this is the way you declare your cursor so you write your select query uh, the select query in your declare while you declare a cursor so let us see how do you open the cursor it is an executable statement which will identify address of a cursor and retrieve row based on conditions specified in a cursor declaration to say in a simple when you open cursor statement when the open cursor statement is executed the query associated with that cursor is executed and the resultant table is created so Whenever it uh, encounters the open statement, it creates a resultant table uh, for the above cursor declared, and uh, the query happened there. I mean, the query is the statement given there. So it creates a resultant table, and it points to your first row of that particular cursor, first row, first row of, of that particular resultant table where you can read the records. So now you have declared declared the cursor and you have opened the query and uh, a separate resultant table is created so what is the next step so we we need to read it or we need to fetch that records from this particular table so it is a, the important note over here is all host variables uh, before open cover must be populated with data so the syntax in procedure division open cursor it's a simple statement so exec open cursor that's it step 3 is to fetch the data that is the fetch the data from your resultant table so it is another executable statement similar to read to retrieve row by row to application program open fetch retrieves only one row right so in order to retrieve more records uh, multiple records you need to keep it in perform loop fetch has to be coded with host variable equivalent to number of columns specified in cursor declaration when fetch cursor statement is executed it retrieves the row to which the cursor in the above is pointed right so syntax exec sql fetch your cursor name into where you want to place this value after fetching the records so you have to place these values into your host variables that is your local variables and do some manipulations or calculations or what is the logic you want to play so this is the way this is the syntax and the example exec sql fetch cursor into your department id and department name then that's it this is how this is the functionality of the fetch and the next step is to close a cursor it is used to close a cursor cycle the syntax is close cursor and the close cursor name sorry it's close cursor name 
So the example is close cursor name. So when close cursor statement is executed, it destroys the cursor as well as the resultant table, whatever it has been created during an open. So, so these are the four different of this is th this is a, a life cycle of a cursor that is uh, declare declare a cursor open a cursor fetch a cursor and close a cursor so this is very 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 important working with db2 so please remember the cycle of this so we can declare any number of cursor against one table and also it can be declared against multiple tables so that's all about the cursor I in my next video i will be coming with details thank you so much for watching this video and uh, in my next video the complete program using cursor i will be explaining about this so stay tuned to mainframe dvd tutorials thank you so much for watching have a great and pleasurable day